Hello there, everyone. This is Giganaut. Or, as I'm known in most places other than the Final Fantasy Randomizer community, Giga Otomia. Uh, I'll be your host for the next eight ish hours. And with me, I've got uh, Softnum. Are you going to be the uh, commentator for this Earthbound run? Absolutely, I will be commentating uh, this run of PK Scramble, which is one of our Earthbound randomizers. One? There's more than one? There is actually more than one, and there's another one called Ancient Cave, which we may talk about if we get bored. All right. Go ahead. But, uh, today uh, we have running, we have Arlux in the lower right-hand corner. We have Pebble Possum in the upper right-hand corner, and in the upper left-hand corner, we have Unown, um, who will be running PK Scramble for us, which is an open-world randomizer in the style of other SNES RPG open-world randomizers. Um, I am going to go ahead and get us started. It will be fast and furious at the beginning as we kind of check everything. Um, we are running some spicy flag sets, too, and we will talk about those as we go. But I am going to let the runners go here. Do you mind if I interrupt you for oh, a short ahead, bit for please. the, uh, just yep. to let everyone know what the charity event is about yet again. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we are running for the Burn Children's Fund for the Medical University of South Carolina. The Burn Children's Fund is to ease the recovery process for MUSC's pediatric burn patients and their families through supplies and training for the highest quality burn care, direct family support, and education about burns. Uh, they also hold a camp. They call it the Camp Can Do, which uh, basically does the same thing. It's just overnight. I should have read all this before. <laughs> It's all right. Um, it's, it's it's always fun to to win those things. Yeah. Go ahead. All right. So I'm gonna let our racers go here. Um, they will get started here in about 15 seconds. So click this button. So, um, Piggy Scramble is an open world randomizer. Like I said, in the vein of other SNES open world randomizers that you may be familiar with. Um, we do not get an airship in this one. We do have the most majestic transit, which we may cover later. But um, instead, we get access to the teleport spell um, early in this seed, and we get some teleport locations, which open up the world. For now, immediately, what we're going to be aware of is we start in deep darkness. Um, and we have teleports to Foresight, Delarm, and deep darkness. So normally, you would start in Onet just like you do normally. Um, but we have the flag on of random start. So we started somewhere random, and we had three teleport locations to go to. Um, it looks like Pebble and Unknown and Ari here now are going to Delon. The nice thing about Delon is you can get an extra party member here. It looks like it is uh, Poop um, here in Delon for us. It could be any of the kids that we don't have already, uh, but it is Poop. It can also be a Teddy bear, I believe, or a hawk. So, collecting some items here. Um, a couple of our runners are going to go ahead and drop a safety save. Not really a lot else to do since we have Poo, it looks like Pebble's going to come down here, and if we do the meditation sequence, we learn another teleport pattern. Um, that's going to be kind of the major way to unlock progression, is through teleport patterns and key items. So, um, this is going to be the familiar who concentrates and gets his arms and legs and vision and all of that removed, just like in the normal game. It does give me a little bit here to catch us up and talk about how PK Scramble works. So, um, it is it is a key item, open world randomizer. There is a lot of key items in the game that... Uh, our runners will be getting uh, one of the key items that um, 
one of the things that happens is that you get teleport locations that open up various places uh, like any of the teleport locations plus we've added a couple more like happy happy village you can teleport to now and a couple other ones are skipping my mind right now but uh, I forgot how much this was sped up and we got a teleport to Lost Underworld so um, as you can see we're going to continue to do this oh and who had the carrot key? So Pooh and Jeff will come with a key item. And get the carrot key just like we normally do. We give the carrot to the bunnies and they disappear. So it looks like Pebble's going to go see um, about this sanctuary. Um, and that brings me to how you win the seeds. So what you have to do in PK Scramble is... You generally have to do a certain number of sanctuaries. In this case, we have decided that the number of sanctuaries is six. Uh, that gives us a nice couple hour run to show off most of the game. Um, you can do six sanctuaries, and then as long as you have access to the end game area, you go for, defeat Gagas, pray nine times, and win the game. Um, you may do seven sanctuaries, or plus one sanctuary of the normal goal. Then all you have to do is beat Magikan, and whatever boss at the end of that, then you win. Or you can do two extra sanctuaries, which would be eight in the case that we are looking at today. And they will, um, and then you will win the game immediately upon completing your eight sanctuary. So um, there are some options in routing there. Um, I imagine with it being six sank here, um, our runners are probably going to go six and then go fight Googie um, or Gigas. So, um, we already see quite a bit of divergence here from our runners. Pebble Possum is in four side. It looks like Ari has decided to go fight some Sprouts somewhere. Looks like they're gonna. Looks like Everdread has... Oh, and Ari wiped to the Sprouts, so we'll recover here. Oh, let's... let's... And we see on a note screen one of the other flags that we have set. So we can see from the background that this is supposed to be the number three mole. But instead, we have a random boss. So 30% random bosses are on, which means 30% of the bosses in the game have been replaced with a random boss with random stat. We also see that um, extended Psy Shuffle is which means that... Um, Pooh wasn't necessarily going to know Star Storm. Now, in this case, Pooh knows Star Storm, so it's kind of just the problem. But that happens sometimes. Pebble Possum in my favorite part of the game. Dark Side, which is lots of fun, in my opinion. Um, let's see, it looks like tree boss here i didn't i didn't quite catch the name of the tree boss but tree boss here has given us a little bit of trouble here the fancy mini tree 2.0 um and we wiped a tree so we met uh pogo pumpkin dark side looks like ari might be gonna go and try pink cloud here see how that's gonna treat us we got a green swirl on the mushroom. Oh, and it looks like we know thunder too, which is really great. Get some levels here. So early in the game, what we're looking to do is open up the world, open up our options, and get some early levels so that we can make some progress in the seed. Um, the way that it's not Goose Goose. Googie. Everybody knows it's Googie. You just pray nine times. It's easy. Um, so, J. Tomar 
in chat here is the creator of PK Scrabble, and so uh, very uh, very respected member of the community here, distracting me. As uh, unknown takes the road here, trying to get back to oh, there's a zombie. That's cool. Oh, and there's a tender crowd in here. So, tender crowd we hand to some people in Lost Underworld, which we have access to. And we have found Frankie Stein on Pebble Screen. Frankie Stein's a pretty easy boss. Um, it is scripted, it goes every other turn, steam, and every other turn a hit. Um, in Dark Side here, get through. I did not see what we managed to get there out of Moonside. Oh, and we got the we got the Hawkeye. So the Hawkeye is what you normally get at the end of the pyramid. So helps us out here. Where and unknown has found Starman Jr. Now normally you have Buzz Buzz helping you fight Starman, but not in this case. In this case, Starman is casting fire and killing us. Oh, I know what I was going to say. So progression is balanced in this game um, through a pretty unique system that uh, the game decides what order it thinks you should do everything. A, a logical order where things are opened up, and it kind of creates a path through the sea. And it will weight the enemies and the items and the bosses based on that order through the sea. And when you get to the end of a sanctuary, it will tell you which sanctuary number you're at. But that's pretty much one of the only kind of hints you get as to which way the... Uh... Which, which way or which uh, order you're supposed to do things in according to the logic of that specific seed. So it's kind of a neat little uh, way you can kind of tell if things are not doing a lot of damage, you're probably over-leveled. If things are killing you quickly, you're probably under-leveled. It's, it's kind of a neat little uh, way to progress through the seed. The hint people will also tell you the next thing that you haven't done that is in the logic of the scene. So it'll always point you to logically what would be the next step. But, um, let's see. Ari's, or er, Pebble's gonna fight. Crocodile's here. Unowned's decided to go through Moonside. Um, I just missed Ari. Oh, this is where, uh, our friend the tree you went. Tiny tree 2.0. But Ari has some levels here. Ooh, solidifications is never good. Looks like Pooh is gonna go down. Oh no, we gotta heal off. Life up, Star Storm. Hopefully this is enough to take down the fancy mini tree 2.0. Um on Ari's screen. But we're running out of side points here. We did use a brain, brain food snack. Um, one other flag that is on here is random food. So the food will have a random effect. Um, so it's not always going to do what it does in base games. So in this case, it provided Poo with uh, some hit points and some uh, psychic points. So, uh, but the tree is being quite... Um, Quite the stubborn character here for us. And we do make it through. Unfortunately, Ness went down before uh, we did, but managed to make it through here. And Ari is one sank on the board. Now, what you'll see, and Pebble Possum's done this, and, and you'll see some of our other writers do this, is that they'll use teleport and they'll intentionally run 
into things, you saw Pebble just do this here. And that's to get around enemies. A lot of times you can get past enemies by teleporting. Do it here. Um, because as you're doing the teleport movement, the enemies don't move. And so it's a it's a pretty kind of clever way here to, to get through places that uh, without meeting all the encounters that maybe the game wanted you to. And uh, we've gotten a little trapped here. We're going to see if we can sneak by this bush with teleport alpha. But nope, we're going to meet some bears and some toms. So Ari's kind of looking at what we have. We have Underworld, Dusty Dunes. As teleports to Foreside. Looks like we're going to go see what Evergrad has for us. Um... So we use the Hawkeye in Deep Darkness. It does what it does in the normal game. It illuminates the paths so that you can get through. So Pebble and Unown are on the on a similar path here. Through the seed. Oh, we met a hieroglyphic. It's another thing. Um... Enemies will be shuffled and randomized. So the enemy movement is shuffled so enemies don't move just like they do in the normal game. And we got Jeff, and Jeff has the Shyness book. So the Shyness book um, is what normally you've had to go pick up from Apple Kid's house for uh, some of the crap. There are some of the Tendos, rather. Tendos. Ooh, some, uh, some beefy cave boys here, eating a 164. Um, so with extended size shuffle, it does look like we've got um, one of our rockins on our normal rocket, but that could actually be anything. And you can see Pebble there using the teleport trick to get past uh, his enemies here in deep darkness. Ooh, nasty flies on an unknown screen. A historic graffiti. I'm sorry. Not a hieroglyphic. A historic graffiti. I apologize. So, Pebble giving the Shyness book to the Tenda, exchanging it for the Jar of Fly Honey. Jar of Fly Honey will let us get into Belch's base. We learned how to teleport somewhere that I missed to... I didn't quite get a look. I bet we're going there now, so let's see where we end up. Oh, Winters. So, learned how to teleport to Winters, um, where we will go talk to the Bubblegum Lady. Bubblegum Lady does not necessarily sell us Bubblegum. We get the Sign Banana. Sign Banana is what we give the guy who wants Venus's signature to get past him. It's like, oh, pretty nice shop here in, in Winners, too. So, Pebble doing some shopping. Before heading to Foreside. It's like we're going to try... Oh, we're just going to go turn in our, our assigned banana here. Then we end up in the sewer underneath the dinosaur caves. As you do. 
normal kid stuff every day. So you see uh, happening on unknown screen is that he's doing me something we call despawning. So enemies are very few enemies are 100% spawn in this game. And most of them aren't even like really that high. And so you can get RNG. if You just keep trying here to. Uh... Oh, trying to get past these bugs to see what sanctuary this is here underneath. And we're going to fight the red antoids. Looks like four sanctuary. So, and it's carbon dog. So this should be an interesting fight. But it is actually carbon dog. So that's, that's good. Not one of our uh, shuffle or uh, randomized. Uh, bosses. Sidestorm mini here. Ooh. It's hits for 110. That's that's uh it's quite a bit. This is the fourth sank though, so it's not really that surprising, but for, uh... Oh! And Carbon Dog turned into a future violent mushroom. So that's great for us here. Um, see what the future violent mushroom can do. Looks like we can mushroomize people, which is what's special from the mushroom. Oh, and it has life up too. That's that's pleasant. Um, looks like we're trying to see if we can just bash through this here. Maybe we'll make it. Maybe we won't. And we did. So Pebble gets this sanctuary down. Uh-oh, Jay Shalmar. You gotta tell me what you didn't realize could happen. So... Ari here despawning these sprouts that were nasty to us earlier. Making their way. And there's a Starman that we're gonna fight in Mole Cave. So... Oh, Carbon Dog turning into a random boss. That was, that was pretty neat. I'm pretty impressed. And we see on unknown screen the standard community meme of butts, 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 butt. Um, so in the normal Earthbound game and in PK Scramble, Jeff's friend Tony will call you, does not call Ness, calls you, and asks you what your name is. Um, and the traditional thing to put in there is butts, 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 butts. But you can put anything in there. Your run is considered invalid if you put all A's, though, or you don't put any of them. You have to, you have to put a mean. It's a rule. It's a rule, is it? It is. It's a rule. Your 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 um, race will be declared invalid. If you don't put in, not for real, but you will you will be frowned upon if you don't uh, at least put something clever. So, I know I'm doing some shopping here at the winter store as well. Um, Pebble Possum. Taking the bus back to what I believe will end up being freed. I've got the spiel ready for real this time, and uh, it looks like we've got a donation in, too. Yeah, so go ahead, take it away. We have 
It was $25 from Linda W. With no comment. And $10 from Fabian Hawk. With the comment, all glory to the robot chicken. I don't imagine that went to an incentive. But to properly start the spiel, uh, we are benefiting the South Carolina Firefighters Burn Children's Fund, which is associated with the MUSC Children's Health Hospital, which is, well, short for the Medical University of South Carolina. Their mission is to ease the recovery process for MUSC's pediatric burn patients and their families through, through supplies and training for the highest quality burn care, direct family support and education. They do this in a few ways. They provide funding for non-medical items and services critical to the recovery of pediatric burn patients, including wound care and rehabilitative equipment. They provide funding for patients and families' basic needs during treatment, such as food, lodging, clothing, and transportation. They educate the parents and family members of their patients about burn care and safety. Funding for They provide funding for burn recovery handbooks and materials. They fund necessary improvements and supplies to provide the highest quality. I did not already read that. To provide the highest quality of burn care, things like pediatric burn hydrotherapy rooms, medications, and dressing supplies. They educate burn care providers by sponsoring advanced burn life support courses for physicians and nursing staff, sponsoring burn association or American burn association memberships for the pediatric pediatric burn team. That's not a B, that's a P. Encouraging burn care conference attendance and continuing education. They support burn patients' emotional well-being during and after treatment by providing child life specialist support, toys and activities for distraction and exercise, the fan club support program, which matches firefighters with uh, burn children to help them return to school and educate their classmates about the kids' experience. They provide school re-entry programs and parent-teacher assistance. They have their annual Camp Can Do, which is spent specially designed to help children suffering from burn wounds and image enhancement through special clothing, makeup consultations, and wigs. And they promote burn awareness and fire prevention throughout South Carolina by supporting program development, training of fire safety instructors, participation in public awareness campaigns, development of teaching aids, and funding for workshops for fire and life safety educators. Thanks for letting me get the spiel off. Absolutely. That sounds that sounds like a great cause. We should uh, encourage everybody to donate to the. We should. Sub. Yes. I would um, give some sort of a personal attachment to the cause, but I don't think any. No, I I know someone who uh, had their house burned down pretty recently. Oh. Huh. They weren't injured in it, fortunately. Oh, but. Uh, Things were not good at that time. How about you? Um, you, uh... I don't think I have any uh, near family who have been who have suffered from um, the sorts of life changing injuries that uh, this fund helps treat. But um, let's keep raising money for this great cause. Yes, let's. Uh, I believe we have... No, I, I was going to talk about incentives, but I don't think we have anything coming up immediately. No. Well, we have a nice little SNES randomizer relay here tonight, but we have not offered any incentives as we are having some races here. Um, I, while we were uh, hearing about the great work going on over there, uh, Pebble was able to get through Threed, um, both the kidnapping and also kidnapping and picking up of Paula, which means that Pebble is at a full party now. And then also, since we had Jeff, we were able to fight the Boogie Tent and um, defeat the Boogie Tent. I missed what we picked up out of the Boogie Tent. Stuff on. Now we are heading through. Cave of the Desert. Wait. Starman Jr. is playing part of Third Strong's Mole here. And Unknown's getting their way to Freed. While Ari is shopping here. 
in deep darkness, but getting their way through deep darkness. I use that Hawkeye, illuminate the skies. Through, I already used my teleport trick to get past some of these enemies. Pebble coming here with lots more kids and lots more levels, having a much easier time than um, Ari did and Unknown did before. So, we see some of our uh, randomized equipment here. We got a horse bracelet. Um, one of the one of the neat things about the randomized equipment is each class of item will have a a sort of like connected set of of uh, monikers that uh, signify the item. So the bracelets appear to be creatures of some sort. Because I saw a satyr there, and I mean, I saw a horse bracelet earlier. Um, just some fun things in the randomizer. Ooh, some exit mice. Exit mice are great. Do we want to drop some junk? Yes. Drop the wet towel. We can't drop Jeff. I mean, come on. Jeff is a friend. You don't drop friends. But yeah, but he's kind of a wet towel. I mean... <laughs> Through Storm Engineer there. Pretty pretty handily. We did get ooh. And we got an auto fight. That is actually one of the nice things about this randomizer. Or about Earthbound in general, actually. Is that if you're just gonna defeat the enemy, it'll give you an auto pass on that fight. So the formula. Don't remember the formula offhand. But um, a lot of times, especially with a green swirl, you will just automatically pass the fight, and it is great. Fighting the old ego bro here. Some of some of the greatest pleasures here are just what names the randomizer comes up with for us while we make our way through the uh, fights here. We got a flash bomb, teddy bear. Teddy bears are great. And unknown picking up uh, last kid. You. Getting the tender crowd for beating up the enemies in there. Gonna go to the underworld and turn in the Tendakrat. Healing our Sunstroke so that we don't die from it. Which is a thing that can happen. See where we get to teleport to next. I'm hoping on that. Scarba. So we got a rabbit bracelet. Looks pretty beefy. Um, silver frying pan. We can have for Paula. Unknown doing some shopping here, getting their own rabbit bracelet, going back to Winters. Must have picked something up that a lot made us want to go through here. <laughs> that, that lobster booked it <laughs> over there to make sure that they joined the fight. That was that was quite impressive. So 
What's fun about Winters, one of one of my favorite things about Winters is that the way that we take through it, the way the speedrun takes through Winters. Oh, we got some chewing gum. That's how we got here. And we see the most majestic form of transit on the Super Nintendo for RPGs, and that is Tessie. So if you uh, have your Tessie emotes in chat, let's uh, see them here while we ride Tessie across winters to go to the cave. So calm, so serene. Look at look at that that regal smile on Tessie. I must say, I've never seen anything more majestic in my life. See, you, you can you can take your airships and and your epochs and and whatever else, and, and that's all fine. We got Tessie, so I think I think we're in. Love Tessie, so. Um, one of the nice things about Earthbound, actually, is there's a lot of, like, transit cutscenes where you don't do anything except move very slowly. Um, there's Tessie, there's the ride in the UFO, there's the couple rides that you take with the Runaway 5. I'm sure I'm forgetting some. But, uh, let's go through Book Road here. Isn't there more than one ride with a UFO? There might be two. Yeah, there is. One of them is very short. But there's the very, very long one. So. Got some broken can here. We're going to throw it away. There's the second sanctuary location, so. And we got. Um, What's that? Smelly urban spoony one? I believe this. That was. Spoop one. Alright. Fair enough. Should be pretty easy though. Um being the second sanctuary location. But we've got a cold here, so that's not great, but not um, going to really hold us back that much. Do colds have an equivalent status effect in other RPGs? Uh, it's kind of like poison. <laughs> All right. Cold, I think colds have poison. Sunstroke's like poison, it, it kind of hurts you over time. Right, it's just... Does it do it every turn, or...? No, it's... Uh, I, I actually don't remember what a cold does. I it's once every few turns, I imagine, then. Yeah. See our nice meme here, with the glowy lights. And, oh. We're making our way through Pond Cave already on the screen. Let's go see. This is the fifth sanctuary location, so... I saw what uh, Unown wrote for their name. Oh no, what was it? Birds aren't real. Yeah! Screw birds. That was a giant present. In the middle of the lost underworld. It must be the precursor to all the presents we have in modern times. Well, it's just funny because, like, so one of the flags is supposed to is it changes the boxes so that it kind of indicates what's in the box, um, mm -hmm. and it, it makes some of the boxes bigger. But you notice that one of the boxes was still the right size for the lost underworld. It's just kind of a weird little corkily engine. Right. Um, there are two NPCs that are coded the exact same, but use different graphics, I assume? Oh, the box... They're treasure chests, basically. The boxes are treasure chests. Yeah. Yeah. 
But yes, basically. And go and Oh. And Ari's gonna go ahead and do this sanctuary here. Oh. Tried to stutter step. That was not a stutterable enemy. I believe I covered this, but the enemy movement is randomized as well, so um normally you can tell by what icon the enemy has how it's gonna move, whether it's gonna move kinda like a bird, you know various movement types in the game, but these are all shuffled around, so you kind of have to figure that out for this scene. And our runners are making pretty good progress here. I think we've seen four or five sanctuaries already um, getting through the game pretty quickly. I mean, that's just, this is going to be um, a really nice uh, kind of run for our runners here. as we go, and we got the meteorite piece from Apple Kid's Mouse. Um, gonna call Dad, make a save. Oh, and we got the meme on Pebble's side. What are we gonna see? Mock Pizza. For those of you who don't know, Mock Pizza is the pizza delivery service in um, Earthbound. So, Mock Pizza Earth or er, Onet Branch is great. So, we're going to go to Scobar now because we can't really do anything else in Winners. So this is going to lead us out into the desert. We got an adder coin. That's uh, pretty good. So I'm guessing that the coins, which work as kind of like shields in this game, they're, they're defensive items, um, are supposed to be the Chinese zodiac, based on what we've seen. Gonna go through the pyramid. Pyramid's very straightforward. Um, pretty uh, reviled dungeon in vanilla. And Ari gets the the fire sanctuary here. I kind of missed what fire spring enemy was. It must not have been very um, very germane or very hard because. Completely missed it. But gotta go to winners, probably. Get the sign banana. Do some shopping here. Guess again, J. Tolmar telling me I'm. That's fine. It must just be it. I'm okay. Do you want to equip the horse? Reset? Sure. There's a mimic and a fire that we managed to get through. You cannot encounter uh, enemies on stairs, so if you can manage to juke them, it won't follow you up the stairs. You won't get an encounter. It's pretty nice. Um, oh, and a known stuttering past this fire here. Very nicely. Butts, 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 butts. The traditional. I think I would have been disappointed if one of our runners didn't do that. So, already going to go turn in the sign banana here. Taking a different path through the seed, but I believe is even on Sanctuary Pebble right now. So, the engaged fire bug and the annoying reveler. Most revelers are annoying. So. It seems redundant to me. Enraged. Not engaged. Engaged would be better.
oil poncho. Vitality goes in. Eat Meraki. Teleport anywhere flag. So normally you can't teleport inside dungeons or sanctuaries or things like that. You have to be in a town or kind of between towns. There's only certain maps that allow you to do that. Uh, Pebble getting through Master Barf with uh, basically no problem there. Um, which is great because Master Barf makes the worst noises in the world. Um, I don't know how they got a perfect belch sound out of Super Nintendo, but they did, and it's gross. Um, they probably used a sample. Yeah, I, I mean, it's it's sampled in there and everything, but it's... Right there. <laughs> and you gotta talk, like in the vanilla game, you gotta talk to them. So, so we I saw the carbon dog turn into a mushroom. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Saw that earlier. It's kind of great. So normally the car, the carbon dog turns into like the the crystal dog, um, kind of like carbon turns into a diamond. Right. Um, but no, now carbon dog. So the other form of carbon dog hit that thirty percent enemy randomizer and turns into a mushroom. future violet mushroom. Yes. So our runners are actually pretty powerful here. They're they're making their way through the seed pretty handily, I would say. But I don't think Ari's gonna have much trouble with our friend the mushroom, although we got mushroom eyes, pretty good. So <laughs> mushroom actually switches your controls. So it rotates your controller. Like after a while, your controller it basically rotates the directional buttons 90 degrees. So, uh, left becomes up, and down becomes left, and so on, and so forth. And it's really kind of amusing, because you can just rotate your controller to um, move that way. But um, you have to go find the guy who will buy him off your head in the hospitals for 50 bucks a pop. So... I mean, that's a lot of money. Yeah, I mean, for a mushroom that's growing on your head, it's messing you up anyway. It's kind of like, it's it's very interesting because it's you, normally you have to pay to remove status effects, but they actually just pay you to remove it. You learn to teleport to Saturn Valley, and we don't take poo, which is great. So the teleport to Saturn Valley is actually pretty valuable because we have the uh, meteorite piece too. So this actually means... We have access to everything we need. But we will see that we're going to go to Saturn Valley. I think that was kind of weak when you're thinking about it. Nope, we're going to go find Dungeon Man first. We got the hieroglyph copy, which lets us into the pyramid. Uh, now, the runaway five will take us to three on Ari's screen now. So, Ari having done a couple things, but kind of following in the same path, and Pebble takes a death. Let's see. We are. Oh, just here. Not really. I'm sure your community gets this joke quite a bit, but I, I had no idea they put Mega Man weapons in Earthbound. Uh, Unown bought the Gemini laser from the Desert Merchant. Ah, uh, well, there are lasers, and um, when the items are randomized, they get different prefixes, so I guess Gemini, or Zodiacs, probably at that point, are uh, that class, that items class this time, so you don't always see Gemini laser, but... Uh -huh. 
Cobra coin. Coins must be snakes. I must have seen something wrong. Snick. So we're gonna go here. Where does this let us teleport to? Oh, Onet. That's actually really nice. Onet has a lot of checks in it because it's the first area of the game. So, yeah, looks like Pebble's gonna go to Onet. Get a couple teleport checks, a couple key item checks. Um, let's see here. Yep, gonna head to the library. Go get. Item here on bookcase. You got Franklin Badge. Franklin Badge is used in Happy Happy Village to, in the vanilla game, deflect um, lightning. In this game, it lets you fight whatever boss is at Happy Happy. So. Does it not still reflect lightning? It does for whoever's holding it. Um, but there's only like one boss that it like those battles for, and it might not be the same one. So, right. Yeah. Exactly. You do need to keep it behind something. Yep. So I'm heading backwards out of Saturn Valley. I think we're. Yeah, we're going to head up to the, uh, to turn in our fly honey in and enter our barf's cave. So, in the vanilla game, you have to know the password to get in here, and the password is literally waiting three minutes. So you just have to sit there for three minutes. I'm not kidding. It's, uh, it's, it's, this game is, is quite fun. Oh, and we have Tessie. I'm supposed to Tessie again. It's a fun joke on the part of the developers. Yeah, it's great. I mean, they tell you. I mean, the, the Mr. Saturns tell you. That's the password, so you don't have to, like, guess it. But it's just really kind of amazing. Well, do they tell you in a straightforward way? I mean, they tell you in a Mr. Saturn way. Fair enough. As straightforward as Mr. Saturn is about anything. Do they at least use the words three minutes? Uh, I think it's just... I, I don't actually remember. I just remember that they tell you that you have to wait for something. Fair, fair. Oh, and... We might have... Sergeant Strong, and we do. Captain Strong. Captain Strong in the normal game is encountered after a fight with several other police officers, one at a time. So it's generally pretty easy as we see here. Yeah, see? Burping at us. It's like gross. And... So these ghosts are in here so that when you do this, it opens up all the teleport. <laughs> and all the Mr. Saturns have been replaced by this cool dude in glasses. That's, uh, that's neat. I actually didn't know it could do that. I it literally... looked like they had a different font, too. Yep, they don't have the normal Mr. Saturn font. It was more readable. Yeah, just a little bit. Oh, and the crocodiles move like flies. Uh, and Pebble finding 
logically the sixth, and finding the boogie tent. Boogie tent just being the face, just hilarious on every other background. Sometimes the face is on like something ridiculous. It's just funny. Do you know uh, how many sanctuary locations each runner has? I haven't. I haven't been keeping close enough track to to know exactly. All right. Unfortunately, and we don't have the trackers up or anything, so it's um, okay. We must be getting pretty close though, because I know that Pebble's got at least four or five, and I think Ari's pretty close to the same number. <laughs> and the boogie tank goes down. So, and, and when it says it's the sixth, like I was explaining earlier, it's the sixth logical. Um, right. It's the sixth order. sanctuary in the vanilla order. It, it's the sixth sanctuary that the randomizer wanted you to go to. Uh, so, uh, not necessarily in the vanilla order. Yeah, not necessarily in vanilla order. Um, I have forgotten where we are. Oh, we're at bar space. This one's like four sixths. But, like, for instance, Ari did uh, the Fire Sanctuary, and that's actually one of the last ones. And he did that one way earlier, so... Mm -hmm. That said, like, third or fourth. Mm -hmm. And now, Pebble's gonna go do Pink Cloud, which is the Sanctuary here in Delon, after you have the Carrot Key. So, should be a walk in the park for Pebble. This may be Pebble's sixth Sanctuary, I think. So we'll have to see. Yeah, I mean, this is... I'm pretty sure this one ended up being the first or second one that the Logic wanted you to do, so... We will see. Kale smoothie. Would you like a kale smoothie? Like no, kale? that sounds disgusting. I don't, I don't really like kale. It's not my favorite thing in the world, but that's okay. Yeah, this is the fancy mini tree. Yep. Poom, 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 and we're out of there. It just instantly imploded. Yeah. Well, it's the, when you're when you're leveled beyond like this, then it has a tendency to do that to us. So. Grand boob. It was a good All right. We're going to go to Tendo, which I think. We've replaced all the Tendos with the Entertainers at the Shack. The one that Ari kind of went through earlier. But yeah, Pebble's kind of in cleanup mode now, it appears. And Ari is taking the Tessie across winters here. I don't know if we'll see a double Tessie for anybody. Once in a while, you have to ride Tessie twice. Um, it's very majestic and very nice, and we love Tessie, but Tessie's also pretty low, so. Teleport to the ladder so that the barf doesn't get us. And the barf got us anyway because our kids are slow. Oh, I'm sorry. Any slow kids. A pile of goo. That's not a pile of goo anymore. <laughs> Turned into a cave boy. Mushrooms, which appear to move like snakes. 
beat, beat up our uh, friend the Scoop. Wow, you can cast some Psychic on Spook, which is pretty interesting considering it's our second Sanctuary. Unown is trying to despawn. This uh, Whirling UFO is what that normally is. Or Whirling Robot, rather. Um, and manages to, so that's good. This should say... Oh, no, it's going to say it's about to get to button. So... So... Not room for the last S, unfortunately. Let's 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 put. Yeah, we'll put it in in post. Yeah, exactly. So Pebble gonna go find fire. I must have been wrong about how many Pebble it managed to get. I think Pebble tried some of earlier sanctuaries and didn't manage to get them. UFOs appear to be teleporting. So, they move like star people. Oh, and the extra cranky lady kind of, kind of giving Ari the business there in Pond Cave. This is called Pond Cave. It has a pond in it. I see. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> As soon as you see the pond, you'll know why this is a meme. <laughs> but we gotta call it something, so... Oh, I'm kidding. I don't know. Is that the pond? Yeah, that was the pond. We almost, I almost missed it. I was watching <laughs> Pebble. Yes. But hey, it's Pond King. We gotta see us in shot. It increases your guts and misses half the time. So maybe we won't. It's not rope climb up a 20 foot cliff cave, it's pond cave. No. And it's, it's not named after the sanctuary you get to when you get past it, it's a pond cave. I don't know. It's got a pond in it. Mm -hmm. And that pond is the most significant possible landmark that you could have inside it. Well, you have to go through it twice, and it has different enemies each time, so it's not like it's the cave where the snakes are. So, it's just... Yeah, I, I was being completely oh, wow. serious there. No, I know. <laughs> and we're gonna fight the Kraken. The Kraken was defeated. That was pretty quick. Aren't Kraken supposed to be hard? Not this one. Pebble's doing everything kind of out of order, which t t tends to manifest itself in this sort of thing where you just kind of clean up the sinks and there you go. Horn of Life, Secret Herb. We didn't buy any toothbrushes. The kids will have poor oral hygiene here. Gonna go to Saturn Valley. Ari, right, gonna take on Sanctuary here while Anon is doing the boogie tent fight at the end of End of I don't even remember. Yep. Um, oh, 
Oh, wow. Franklin Batch is pretty good. So, um... What, uh, Pebble is doing is that there's certain... Uh... You, you, would, you would like to have the equivalent of a star pendant before going and fighting, uh, Gogas. So we're kind of trying to figure out if we have access to that. World-class bat. Pig bracelet. I take issue with the name of that world-class bat. Yeah? It's missing an S. Oh. Yeah. Sometimes the character limitations on Super Nintendo hardware make us do things. And I'm guessing that's what that is. There will always be Pond. Pond is always oh, is permanent. But this is a variable width font. Why are there character limitations? I, I, I don't know, I'm guessing. Ask You've got lots of space there. It looks like you do. I agree. Kraken soup. So it is very helpful in this game. The info command for the randomizer does actually tell you what things do. So even if it's randomized, you can kind of tell. And yeah, Pebbles Pebbles got six sanctuaries down. Or at least I hope Pebble has six sanctuaries down, otherwise we're doing something very silly here. Um and we'll be go yep. And we'll be going to uh turn into a robot well, transfer their their uh, minds to robots and then go and fight Gagas. It is very helpful. But save here before we go and fight Googie. We sometimes call Gygus Googie because that's what your mom... At the end of the game, you get a letter from your mom, and it says, I think you defeated some monster like Googie or something. You know, I was going to make a joke earlier about having heard my name. <laughs> no, that is, that is, that is why that is a, that is a, a thing that is being said here. I love the noise of the lots make chop up. Uh, soul consuming Phoebe. Phoebe's are generally encountered in the. Um, in the uh, Marf Cave. You encounter a lot of them at the time, but they don't consume your soul. Oh! Gygax's music is. Dungeon Man's music, that's great. Well, Gygus is also a dungeon. Yes. Technically. Yes. So. So, Pebble is the first person to enter the fight. I actually didn't see where Prey was. And I don't remember if the flag's on the randomized switch kid hat. That's Prey, but... Um, Gygus has three phases. The first phase, you're dealing with Gygus' assistant, which is, in this case, Starman. Um, normally, that is heavily armed Pokey. 
Um, in the second phase, you are fighting directly in the phase you play. It does look like kid number two has prey. Yeah, so Paula has prey. Just normal. Yep. Indeed. So unknown in the Gygas fight, right behind Pebble. With I'm pretty sure Ari's not really actually that far behind, so. Got to take care of Starman Flux here with Rockin Beta. Oof. Well, at least it's not breaking. Kind of only matters if break it. We will keep Paula up. So, we're through phase one. Turn off the devil machine, which was protecting Gygus. Now, we are going to fight Gygus directly. Gygus is actually weak to Brain Shock, which doesn't appear any of the children have. Um, which sometimes makes them skip turns and stuff. It's actually a very nice strategy to use. But we're just going to pour Psychic Points into Yugi here. Elle's dying here. Let's see if we get through the time to heal Elle. Um, of course, Earthbound has the wonderful spin down system where even if you take mortal damage, if you can get it healed before it spins all the way down, then. Oh, there was a Brain Shock Jeff item. I don't know if any of our runners managed to pick it up. You cannot. Grasp the true form of the attack. I believe on a car they call it an odometer. All right, so we got through the second phase. Now we're into the third phase. We do have to survive. Um, Gygus will continue to do this. And look, it's Mr. Saturn. So instead of it being set, it's obviously randomized. This is a randomizer after all. So... Um, Pray. We did get a life up off, so we will likely be okay here, but not great. Oh, that is not good. Luckily, we have a couple life noodles. Third prayer is the beach people from Summers, which I believe we didn't visit at all. Use the Kraken soup. Uh-oh. Oh, no. And Pebble wipes to Googie. Um, looks like Unown is on the... Uh-oh. Break it down. Yeah. Um, that was not a very nice Gygus at all. So. Yep. Now Ari's doing the, doing the dance. Going through the inventory scene that we have. And Ari's going to head over here, too, and I think we have a race on our hands.
Oh, Anon gets to phase three with three kids up and um, some some tearful eyes, which is just a minus effect. So they're the same thing as it does in other RPGs. Ari is to the library. Get the footprint Pebble heading into their second try at Gaius here. So, second prayer away. Wetness over. <laughs> So we'll contend with Starman Jr. here for a little bit. Poor Jeff, always dead. I imagine Jeff's magic defense is pretty pretty trash. Yeah, and I mean, once you run out of bottle rockets, it's just not not the most useful kid in the world. Mm-hmm. Oh, and unknown wipes to Gygus as well. Ari doing some shopping. Gonna gonna take out a bunch of money. Probably buy that forest coin super genius. Yep. Ooh, very full inventory. What do we got here? What is the forest coin? Protects from fire, freeze, paralysis. Oh, it's horse bracelet. That's why I was messed up. Alrighty. Gygus the Great Equalizer. Yeah. Looks like Unown's gonna go have some shopping. Try and try and find some sort of uh, equipment here to make Gygus a little bit more manageable. Oh, and Ness is already down for Pebble's second attempt. Uh, and runners do actually have the option here, as as I was explaining, kind of when we started out this run, is that they can uh, they can go find another sanctuary to do, and then all you have to do is finish magic unit, or you can finish two sanctuaries and beat the game. And I know might be looking at that, going, hmm. So we're definitely, it looks like we're going to go fight um, Everdread and UFO Monster. It is seeming to me like uh, the two Sanctuaries route might be the fastest with all my uh, lack of knowledge in the game. Yeah, um, often not. I haven't been keeping close enough track to it. I know that we still have uh, Big Step. That's going to be the, the one in Onet left to do, and I believe the one in Happy Happy would be the, the two that are left. Sounds um, right to me. So... But I didn't see a 7 or an 8, so they're probably going to be pretty hard. Yeah, but there's no way they can be harder than the, than the Gygus fight, right? Not necessarily, but it's... But both of them together, I don't know how fast they are. But we'll see. I mean, I know it looks like they're going to go deeper into the seed, so we'll have to see if Pebble manages to make it through 
here. Again, Jeff dead. Poor Jeff. Poor Jeff. Everdred Stone. <laughs> There's two Everdreds. He has a twin. There's twin Everdreds. I guess that's one way to increase the difficulty of the boss. Ooh. Big hit. I wonder, too. I wonder what made him change his mind. He was helping us earlier in the scene. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, Frank helps you too after you kill him. This is the Frank spot, of course. Um, it's like Pebble has made it to phase three. Two kids alive again. Keep trying to skate annoyance. That's kept trying to crab with the name of the monster here. Yeah, so I was oh, managed to get our life up off. We pray again. What's the second prayer? Crap um, soup gets us, prevents us from dying at least. We pray a third time. We get some results. I did not manage to see what we gained from my fight. But I guess we're going to sound about this so. stuff. Must not have been something useful like the police badge or the key to the shack, which would allow us to do any more sanctuary. Yep, Pebble wipes again. And while Ari goes into the strong fight here. Pebble taking the full reset. Going back to Santa Valley, we're gonna go to Onet, probably follow Unknown a little bit. Oh, that's a fun graphical glitch there. Oh, that's right. I think that's supposed to be a bear. I think it was supposed to be a bear. Oh, the thing, uh, like Everdred following them? Or the yeah. thief following them? Yeah. Yeah. There was also, like, some sort of strange. strange that was a graphical off. glitch, yeah. Yeah. Well, in this case, um, it's a six inch seed, not a four inch seed, so we'd be going. We're we're gonna go to eight. So, but we'll see. We have the cop fight, which looks like it's birds today. And Pebble makes their way to two. We're gonna go visit Apple Kid. You did say there was a sanctuary in Tucson, right? There's one in Happy Happy. Right. Which is which is, which is off of Tucson. Yeah, yeah, which is close. So I have played the first half of it now. <laughs> Oh, 
Go to the park. Go get the item from Apple Kid here. The pencil eraser, which means we can get to happy, happy. <laughs> We're going to fight Mini Barf, um, taking the place of Everdread, standing on the roof of his house. That's just vanilla. That's just weirdness. Did he just leave it there and expect the weather to clear it off? Oh, what? The mini barf? I don't know. Yeah, like my my headcanon here is Everdread kind of barfed on his roof for some reason. And it's just like, just left it there. Like, and ah! just left it there. And then it gained sentience for some reason. Probably because of Gygus' influence, because, you know, this is Earthbound. I'm pretty sure Pebble did everything that they could in Nonat. Um, and now we're going to Tucson because, oh, and we got the lot of bills, which means we have access to uh, three. Which we already is... had access to three. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so, looks like we're going to be going through Peaceful Rest Valley the manual way. Which is never the way you want to do it in uh, um, PK's family. Oh, uh, what is the other way? Oh, well, you can get a teleport. In, in PK Scramble, you can get a teleport to Happy Ah. Uh. And so then you don't have to do Peace for Us Valley, and you don't need the pencil. Um, and, you, and, and the runners will gain the teleport as soon as they go to that location. So once they do it once, fine, but... Right. Do you know why they call it Peaceful Rest Valley? Because it's not peaceful and it's not a rest. That's what I assume. Because it's kind of annoying. My thought would be that they call it Peaceful Rest Valley because it's where you'll get your peaceful rest after you die. Yeah, maybe. I mean, it's... it's me. I, I mean, probably the actual explanation would be something like it was a peaceful, restful place before Gygus' evil influence over everybody's means. That makes a lot more sense. Yeah, I mean, like, if I was going to try and make up a headcanon for it, but... Oh, and the Starmen still teleport. That's cool. But we green swelled it, so we can get away, which is great. So, in this game, the green swirls indicate back attacks, which mean you can always run away. But the red swirls also indicate back attacks. It's just back attacks on you rather than on the enemies. Right. Jay Tomar, you're not supposed to bring facts into this commentary. This is a no fact zone. <laughs> Should be apparent by now. But yes, there's a lot of music references in this game in Japan that didn't make it over for fear of being sued. I still love that the alligators move like flies. It is my favorite thing. Watching those big old bulky things move like flies. Those darn copyright laws. Yeah, it's terrible. Oh, the bear! The bear! <laughs> Quinoa smoothie. I like quinoa, so I'm 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 down with quinoa. I I don't know what a quinoa is. Is it a fruit? It's a grain. It's it's like rice. It just tastes more earthy. Okay. Uh. So it's better. I I, I have a vow of sobriety. Looks like Ari's going to give Gygus a, a try here for the first time. Ari may be a higher level, though. Maybe, Maybe a little bit better equipped. And here we are in PRV. And we're going to go... to the hospital. Make sure Paul is not dead. Uh, 
brain food stink. And then we're gonna come down here and save at the cow house. For $200, you can stay at the cow house. Holy crud. We're just gonna get jumped outside the cow house. Right, yep, we're gonna. Oh, we're gonna. So normally, normally, you can just kind of steal things there, and nothing will happen as long as you don't talk to the guy who's checking up on you for stealing things. But in PK Scramble, the guy will actually chase you if you steal things from them. So, did, did I hear that correctly? He'll just let you. No, no, no. He'll he'll chase you. Ah. Normally, in the normal game, they just if if you don't talk to him, if if you steal him, then you talk to him, then he fights you. But right, they just don't talk to him. Just can steal things. But in this game, they'll, they'll chase you. whatever monster is there. They'll chase you. It's necessarily. Mm -hmm. Galloway, cow, cow. You know, I think they got the wrong color of cow. Uh, Does that make strawberry know. milk? Uh, well, normally the cow the cow is probably the same color as the coal. Because um, normally the cow is blue and the colt's blue. But I guess the, the colt is magenta now. Oh, and the bear is teleported. I, don't, I think I missed that before. That's uh, kind of neat. It's also it's also <laughs> incredibly frightening in this cave because there's a lot of bears. But <laughs> normally, this is, this is like um, one of the first sanctuaries that's open to you in a in a scene. Just the way that the logic tends to work out. So it mm -hmm. tends to be an easy place, and so it being, like, set, probably set up, I think, um, means that it's kind of scary here. Because it's pretty crammed in, and there's a lot of monsters. So Ari's gonna give Googie here a try. Seventh, yep. That's oh, a yeah. background. It's the uh, Gaius background. It sure is. And Mr. Molecule's there. Who is... Who is Mobile Molecule today. Um, who's doing a lot of damage to us. And here I was thinking that we would be done with it. Purple Kale. Wouldn't that be moldy? Um, how can you tell Kale is moldy? Uh, mold generally starts blue, I think. No, white. White, then blue, then green. It yeah. gets into more exotic colors. At least on bread. Yeah, fair enough. Oh, I'm sure it's a thing. I'm just... We're just having fun here. Earth Didn't you say this was a no facts? <laughs> yeah, no facts stream. No facts. This is, this is, this is, the commentary is a no facts now. Okay, so now... Pebble has seven sanctuaries, and so if they can get to Magicants, which I'm pretty sure they can, then all they have to do is finish the boss at the end of Magicants. And... Yeah, they just learned how to teleport there. Oh, well, that's very good. I forgot that was something that happened. Sometimes you 
But, um, yep. So we'll see who's the boss at the end of this. I'm going to guess Frank. I notice everyone is here rather than just Ness. Yes. Yes. But only Ness is in his PJs. That's true. I think Ness is the only one who has his PJs spread. Yes, that, that would be the case. You don't want to meet the Mr. Crusher Park. You don't? Eh, usually not. Well, why not? Um, because it's scary. Because <laughs> we're in the middle of Magic Hat. <laughs> Mr. Question Mark wants to meet you. Well, I know. That's why we don't want to meet them. We're contrary people. Oh, we got a bag of Dragonite. That's great. I love it. We got a bag of Dragonite. So Ari's on the second phase here, I think. Just based on what we're doing. That is the animation for the second phase. Ari might uh, might even be able to defeat Gygus before uh, Pebble Possum does. Or yeah. Pebble Possum defeats whatever's on the Manny Manny statue. Yeah, we might. We might get here. It's a sprout! The secret that, herb? That was a Kraken. Steel herb. What was that? Oh no, I meant the the monster we actually found was a sprout. Uh, there were sprouts walking around in the uh, in the liquid. Oh yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty sure this is a kraken. All right. I'm a little lost, but that's okay. Ah, hypnosis is working pretty well on us, so that's not really great. It's happening on Uno screen. Oh, we. Oh, and we got to pray phase. We have all our kids up on Ari's side, and we have some dice that are calling for help here on Pebble's side. So we will see how many prayers Ari can get through before Gygus happens. But we're uh, just trying to make their way through this. This is not being the easiest fight. Here. It looks like we're going to take a wipe here because Jeff is just probably not going to be able to put this together. Oop. <laughs> Unknown deciding to give Gygus another shot. And yep. So we got through three prayers on Ari's side. Um, and all the kids are up. So this is looking pretty pretty good for Ari here. Market sellers. And we have a nice raid from Lord Taco. Hello, Lord Taco. How did Boogie percent go? Um, uh, we kind of approach the end of this seed here. Trying to despawn Mr. Question Mark. Bye, Mr. Question Mark. Various food vendors. Lady Vibers from. Isn't that supposed to include Ness's sister? Um, 
Uh -huh. She works for a... Uh... Not pizza. Yeah. I don't know. I... <laughs> you thought seven was enough? No, there's two more rounds. Brain and times. <laughs> Ari's friends paid for our hands. <laughs> That's great. Mayor Prickle. Purple. See how the uh huh. Uh, the clumsy robot. The clumsy robot. For some reason, I thought we had encountered the clumsy robot before, and that it had been a random enemy, a random monster, or boss. No, I don't think I ever mentioned curses are on. Curses are on. There's one curse. Uh, what do curses do? Once upon a time, he said something. Um, they are. I, I'm not honestly 100% exactly sure, but there are malices that the monsters, uh, the bosses and monsters get, or you get against the bosses and the monsters. I don't know. They are bad. Make funny bad stuff happen, yeah, basically. I don't know, it's looking like Ori wins. Um, not necessarily, because technically you have to get to the end of Gygus dying. So, if Pebble can make it through the robot, technically he would win. I believe. But Ari wins. The robot does not go down on time, so Ari wins with a time of 139.42. Then we get a nice little uh, animation here. So this is, as I was talking about earlier, the game kind of decides what your uh, path should be. This is actually telling you what it thinks that the path through the game should be. So... I wanted you to do all of these things in this order. Congratulations to Ari. Yep. Congratulations to Ari. Oh! And congratulations to Pebble. Indeed. Getting through the small robot fight here. Time of one forty forty one. Okay, so you had to go. Okay. I, I'm sorry, I'm always fascinated by the way that the logic turns out of what it wanted you to do to get through everything. Um, Montelli Prisoner is Fighting Man. So, and then it tells you, you fought it at level 6, it was level 11. For all of the various uh, monsters <laughs> in the game. Magnet Hill Guardian. The Boogie Tanks. Rainy's Pyramid, Belch Bottom, Mini Guards. See, unknown here. Gonna, gonna give Gaius here another try.
So lots of lots of the game that we didn't see here. But lots of lots of neat information that the PK Scramble tracks here. Twelve teleport box. Oh, they must have all had a toothbrush. All the kids remembered to brush their teeth. I did see the toothbrush in everyone's inventory at one point. Yes. So I think it wasn't on Ari's screen. Kids have to remember to brush their teeth. Of course. Very, very important. The most important. Oh, so does Ari lose an Ari point for winning? Huh? Okay, so... Um... In the community... Um... There is, there is this concept of Ari points. You gain Ari points by doing things which make you lose the game. Basically. If you if you mess up and and for instance die on the first hill, you gain an Ari. Or you you know die to it. You gain. So I guess winning the game. Is awesome. I'm seeing in chat here. We also have a uh, a big. Uh, I'm trying to remember the name of the randomizer again. PK Scramble. PK Scramble? Well, okay, so there's a couple things going on here in the community. There is... Um, right now, we are having, as I mentioned, there's another randomizer. It's called Ancient Cave. Um, it kind of takes takes after the Lufia 2 Ancient Cave. Um, mm -hmm. It works a little bit differently. It is... In my opinion, significantly harder than the games. But, um... So that's a tournament that's going on right now. So if you like to watch Earthbound, you can see some of these races this weekend. Um, or next weekend. Um, on Earthbound Super Series. The other thing is that after that, we will probably have a PK Scramble um, tournament starting up next year. Early next year. Um... Which is going to have a much easier flag set than we have on display here. Um, if it's a flag set that was teased earlier, it's actually going to be kind of a a 40-minute flag set or so. Maybe even less than that. Um, which is going to be a fun time. Sounds like it. Yeah. So, um, if you like what you see here, uh, come on over to our Discord. Where... Relatively friendly people now. We're all pretty, pretty close knit community. Um, very welcoming. So get you started up and play some Earthbound. Remember your childhood. Uh, let me see if we can get a link to all your stuff. In yeah, the I don't know what the I'm not really sure what the command is if Danny put one in for us. I imagine it would be something like exclamation mark. Might be EB or. It's not either one of those. Uh -oh. oh, there we go. Thanks, Danny. <laughs> Thank you, Danny. But, yeah, I mean, Gygus was very Gygus today. Um, not really not really being a pushover. Not really just kind of rolling over, but... Yeah, I mean... Pebble and Unown were have been in go mode now for you know since about the hour. So <laughs> we, you know, maybe Mion, we should say we're the third most friendly community out there, but 
Um, sounds terrible. The Gigas Curse. The Gigas Curse. Okay. Unknown making it to the second phase here. Um, with all the kids up, which is great. Paula needs some life, but you know, we can we can handle that. But yeah, I mean, it was a good showcase too because we got to see a couple of the different um, endings that you can get. Mm -hmm. the, the two win conditions, two out conditions. of three. Yep. So, Patsy, the, the question is, like, who's going to volunteer to be the fifth friendliest community? That, 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 oh, yeah, we're, we're pretty good, but we're fifth. Like, there's four <laughs> other better communities. Like, who's going to who's gonna do that? I think everyone's going to strive to be the third best, third most yeah. friendliest community. It's very much a meme in our community. Um, very often when we do predictions, it's going to, who's going to come in third. Um, the, the third position is the most sought after position. Apparently it is. Uh-oh, Paul's going to die. Yeah. We're actually racing to be the third best relay team. You wrote this. Butts, 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 butts. Ah, uh, yes. I should probably uh, mention what you're donating for again. Yeah, that'd be probably a good idea. All right, let me pull the fuel back up. All the donations that get sent to us over Tiltify for this marathon go toward benefiting the South Carolina Firefighters Burn Children's Fund, which is affiliated with the MUSC Children's Health Hospital, which is short for the Medical University of South Carolina. Their mission is to ease the recovery process for MUSC's pediatric burn patients and their, and their families through supplies and training for the highest quality burn care, direct family support, and education, they do this in a few ways. They provide funding for non-medical items and services critical to the recovery of pediatric burn patients, including wound care and rehabilitative equipment. They provide funding for patients' and families' basic needs during the treatment, such as food, lodging, clothing, and transportation. They educate the parents and family members of their, of their patients about burn care and safety, funding for burn recovery handbooks and materials. They fund the necessary improvements and supplies to provide the highest quality of burn care. Things like pedi pediatric burn hydrotherapy rooms, medications, and dressing supplies. They educate burn care providers by sponsoring advanced burn life support courses for physicians and nursing staff. Sponsoring American Burn Association memberships for the pediatric burn team. Encouraging burn care conference attendance and continuing education. They support burn patients' emotional well-being during and after treatment by, by providing child life specialist support, toys and activities for distraction and exercise. Fan club, the fan club support program, which matches firefighters with burned children to help them return to school and educate their classmates about the kids' experience, and providing school reentry programs and parent-teacher assistance. They have their annual Camp Can Do, which is spe specially designed to help children suffering from burn wound, and image enhan enhancement through special clothing, makeup consultations, and wigs. They also promote burn awareness and fire prevention through South Carolina by supporting program development, training of fire safety instructors, participation in public awareness campaigns, development of teaching aids, and funding for workshops for fire and life safety educators. Or life safety, sorry. Uh, once again, we have the donation link. I believe it's in chat. Yep. And we only have, I believe, $25 to go until we break our first day uh, record. Really? That's great. Yeah. I mean, 
fifteen seventy five is is pretty good here. It is pretty good. Yeah, but it's not the record. We can do it tonight. We can. Uh, do any of the runners want to step in here and talk about? Uh, yeah, yeah. Pebble or uh, Ari or anybody can come in and join us and and discuss as as we see unknown. Um, maybe giving it a third attempt here or a, another attempt here. Let me see if I it can. It looks like maybe a no, which is fine. <laughs> I, I am I am down to keep talking here. Yeah. Uh let me take a look at the Yeah, I I've I message Fritz, so I believe Chat the time was supposed to yeah, I mean, we're, we're... We're a little over, but we've... Okay, I think we we're going to... So as we kind of um, get kind of set up here in the background and uh, see if we're going to have one more Googie attempt or not, um, time into some of it. Yeah. See if we can make way for our brethren in the um, Jets of Time community here. Um uh, is there very much overlap between the two communities? Uh, yes. <laughs> I mean, I, I feel like the Super Nintendo RPG communities all kind of have a lot of overlap. Um, we have PK Scramble, we've got Jets. Coming up, we have Worlds Collide, which is six. Earlier today, we saw Final Fantasy V. Mm -hmm. um, lots of people... I'm pretty sure Mystic Quest is coming up somewhere. Nope, I'm wrong. There's no Mystic Quest in this map. No, but there is a randomizer, and there's significant crossover between FFR and the Mystic Quest community. There but... is. <laughs> um, so, and I think that ends our, the Earthbound portion of this relay race. So thank you for having us and allowing us to... Um, showcase the delightful PK Scramble, and um, we will kind of evacuate here so that um, the Jets runners can take over. Thank you for being here. Absolutely. <laughs>